Hi, I'm Donna Dewberry, the original creator of the One Stroke Painting Technique. And I'm here at Plaid Studio, and I have to tell you, I'm so excited. We're gonna continue the Learn to Paint series, painting flowers of the month, and this month is February the Violet. We have a wonderful kit with worksheets and brushes and wonderful multi-surface paint that's yummy. You're gonna love it. Plaid and One Stroke make it very easy for you to paint something you never thought you could. So let's paint in the spring with our Folk Art Wonderful Multi-Surface Paint and our One Stroke Brushes. Okay, so here's our project. I'm excited for you guys to learn how to paint this because there's so many things you can do with little flowers. But what we're gonna do is I wanted it in a vase or a bowl, and then I wanted, I always like the backgrounds, so I wanted to do a dark sponge background and do an ombre type of a fill where it's dark and it gets lighter, and then it really light up here. So you can see where I uh, use the sponge in some areas more than others and smooth in some areas. But I want you to see that this part of the background is not done um, during this time. We put in the background, then the vase, and then um, we put the table shading or whatever where it's sitting in there then. Then we're gonna come in here and we're gonna practice on our worksheet. I've got great worksheets that are gonna help you learn how to do these leaves. So you practice on our worksheet to do the leaves and then the five petal flowers, which I want you to look at all the deep, deep pretty shades and the light shades that I brought in. So that's gonna be multi-loading a brush and when you learn how to do that you're going to be so excited all right are you ready so this is what we're going to do we're going to pull it to the side and we've got our wrap 12 by 12 canvas and i am going to use citrus this is folk art paint folk art paint luscious creamy beautiful and plaid I, when they came out with multi-surface donna was extremely happy because you can paint on so many surfaces you can paint um, on ceramic, glass, wood, tan, just a multitude of wonderful surfaces. And you don't have to change your paint. And the wonderful thing is it's got like a sealer in it. That's not the technical term, but that's what I, I like about it because when it dries, it's really wonderful. So now I'm gonna take my fingers and I just dampen the sponge. Please don't put it all the way in the water and squeeze it out because it'll be so wet that it'll mess up your background. You just want it dampened, all right? So now look how thick and creamy the paint is. I like to pat it like that so it spreads out a little bit. I've got multi-surface, wicker white, um, citrus green, and sap green. And so, believe it or not, that sap green is just a little bit of depth in there that makes these two colors look really good. And by the way, I'm gonna add some moon yellow in here, just a little bit. All right, now then we're ready. So, when we start painting on the sponge, I'm using the wet side, I always like to go into the white first. So I'm gonna go from the light to the dark and and it's more controllable then, okay? So I'm gonna put some yellow in here. I'm also gonna grab the citrus green now, okay? Now, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna do light over here. Now, canvas is got, it's got fibers like texture. <clears throat> so sometimes I like to make circles to get a smooth area. And then I can come in here and pounce a little bit if I need to. All right, so then I'm gonna, remember I said I'm gonna slowly get darker. Also, I'm going to do all my edges while I've got that same shade, okay? So what we're gonna do now is get more citrus green and a teeny bit of sap green. So I already have the other colors still into the sponge. Can you see that? So now I'm gonna come right here. I like to sometimes do the circles first and then I can tap it smoothie in here. Now I don't want it really busy like that. I want to blend it out and do something I usually tell you not to do is pounce it till it blends and till it's more muted. But I don't want it to be muddy. So see that's got a nice color but I've got to do it on the edge too at the same time because it's hard to go back and get that exact color. It's really easy when you do it then. Okay so now I'm going to use this part of the sponge that doesn't have paint and turn the sponge so I can blend it in, all right? 
and right in here doesn't matter a whole bunch because that's where all of our base is going to go and now we're going to come back i'm still picking up the sap green we're not doing this edge we're doing the flat edge it's going to make it look better okay so now i'm going to not worry about it getting too dark because i can always bring in some light i'm trying not to bounce this all around on you so there you go see how the dark now look i'm pushing it in and working it out and so the rest of the sponge is blending it in okay we're going to go all the way across and i did lighten up on this side over here so how i lightened up over here is with a little bit of the wicker white and i just came in here and pounced it out so luscious fun paint it's got it's rich it has vivid colors and you're going to fall in love with it i like to open them up set up down all the surfaces or whatever i want to paint from metal glass ceramic whatever and have all the paint right there in front of me and i'm not having to go change okay so <clears throat> Now, this is ready. We're going to let that sit and dry for a little bit. And then I'm going to come in here and start putting our base. Okay, so now you want to wash out your sponge. I put it down in my basin sometime, but you should get up and wash it because you want to keep your sponge really nice. All right, so now what I'm going to do is use the paint that I had earlier. This is my wicker white, and I'm using my two script liner. So what I want to do is come in and put our bowl in here and do some shading on it, and then we'll go practice our violets so i'm going to go into water three times and we're going to make it inky we're going to make our wicker white inky so i dip into water again that's your second dip and whenever you need to use this liner we do that and you can even go in three times if you need to but now i'm going to roll this off and i'm going to use the tip of that brush like a fountain pen okay now what i did do is i took my fingers like five fingers up from the bottom down here and i made a little line across here it's all going to be covered so that's just going to be the top of the dish or bowl that it's in and i have just a couple of fingers down here at the bottom so i'm going to kind of curve that it looks better if it's a little curved instead of straight and then we'll shade around. And now you can use chalk. I use chalk a lot, but I'm just using my liner because I have that and it's working. Then I'm going to decide how much on both sides. So see my fingers are spread a little bit. So I can put a little dot there and come over here and put a little dot there. Now I don't always put things centered. Sometimes I put them to the side and let the flowers hang over one way. But this, this one made sense to be centered. So I'm going to come here and we're just wispy pulling it down and the same thing here we go out to that point and then we can come down and that's going to give us an idea of the right size you can put a little small saucer or a small bowl and draw around it too so you don't have to make it a big deal on this okay so now i'm going to wet my brush and wipe it off on my paper towel this is my three quarter inch flat picking up citrus green and I'm going to grab white while I'm doing it okay and I'm going to just come right in here actually I think I used a little bit more of the sap in here too all right and you know what I need I'm going to get some floating medium now floating medium is what we use as folk art floating medium I use this instead of any water I'll rinse my brush out and clean it out but I will get my floating medium and it is the fluff that's inside paint with no pigment in it so it's wonderful and that's what people ask me the most what is that so see it's just as thick and fluffy as the rest of the paint but it doesn't have color so it then it moves like butter okay i'm i got a little bit more medium and now when i was painting this canvas what i wanted to make sure is that you can see the difference i'm keep going over there to my palette my phone plate actually and i worked in the color and to fill it in now see i'm up on the chisel edge of the brush this is your chisel okay and i'm going to come around and fill in that area with a color that's going to be darker or lighter than the background 
All right, so now I need to move this paint. So we've got sap, citrus, sap green, citrus, green, and wicker white. Okay, so there we go. All right, now I did come in with a little bit of white for glare. You can do this now or later, but I like it when it's kind of wet. All right, so see how I'm touching the bottom and I'm dragging it up. And then you would come over to the other side. A little bit more white. Now, what we can do afterwards is I'll, show, I'll teach you how to float and you can float some darker green back here. So now what I like to do, just to let you know when we start floating and we're adding this um, under here, what I like to do is use the shade that's in the background, a darker value of that. But it can actually just be that same color and take water, and like I can take water and clean that off. As long as you do it while it's wet. People try to do it when it's not wet and I'm going, no, <laughs> you can't do it after it's, after it's dry. All right, so our bowl's ready. We can shade it a little bit more later. And so, see, we're going to take green leaves and everything down on top of it so you don't see all of that totally. All right, so I'm going to set this aside. When we do the base here and float, um, we're going to already have some flowers in there and we decided where, where we would shade some shadows and stuff. All right, so I'm going to move that aside and we're going to start practicing our violets. They're five petal flowers, but we wiggle them a little bit. And I want you to see one, two, three, four, five. All right. And so I like to say it's like a gingerbread man. So there's his head, his two arms, and his two, two legs. So that helps you lay out. And I have them numbered for you. And I number them as, as I, where I would have stroked them. Okay. Which one first? All right, so that's going to help you. Now, what I loved about violets, um, I loved it because it signifies watchfulness, loyalty, and faithfulness. So violets are a really nice painted piece to give to somebody because they have all those beautiful attributes. Okay, now let me show you how to load your palette, and we're going to paint our violets and leaves. So let's get our colors in here ready for that. So this is a double loader. In the center, I like to put the floating medium so it doesn't run all over the plate. And so I'm going to put in the fluff that we're going to use. All right, then we're going to pick up our sap green and our citrus green. And this is how you do it when you're working with a palette. You're gonna put um, about a nickel size in there and you're gonna put two colors next to each other. I could put white on one side with a citrus green, wicker white, citrus green, and sap if I needed all three colors. All right, so I, <laughs> I thought that was black for a minute, is the green. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the purple with some white and a little bit of magenta. So I'm going to put out your magenta. Now we're going to get our dioxazine purple and we're going to add that next to our magenta. Okay, so I'm going to also add a little bit of white here. You can decide, like I said, you could put white here. Uh, I could put yellow next to the light green. So that's how you're loading the double loader, what colors you would probably use with them. Okay, so what we want to do is I'm going to take the 12 flat, and I'm gonna show you how to load it, and then we're gonna work on our worksheet. So we're gonna practice on it. So dioxazine purple and wicker white, we're gonna take and pick the, both of those colors up, and see it splits it. You're gonna split it right between there to pick it up. Then you're gonna come here and work it in, okay? And you can get more paint and work it in until you've got a nice two-thirds full loaded brush, okay? So this is an even load, so you're gonna put some of each and for the violets it's really nice because the white's going to be on the outside edge. All right so here's our worksheet and it's got a um, it's coated so that you can take and practice on here and wipe it off. I put more pink on this so that you could see it on the background if it was white you couldn't see it very well. So I can now pick up this is adding a third coat a color so we're going to pick up a little bit of pink and we can work that right in. Just a little bit, okay? So that's how we make that happen. Okay? And I'm gonna come right here, and this is what you do. You practice right there to see if you've got that nice blend. 
all right? Then I have the chisel lines here. We start and we end on the chisel. Now this is a really easy stroke, but if you don't watch how it's done, sometimes you're confused with it. So you're gonna start on the chisel, push your brush down, pressure. Guide the top over and then stand up. So we wanna start on the chisel, pressure, stand up on the chisel. So it should just be like a teardrop, an upside down teardrop maybe, all right? Now what I've done over here, I picked up a little bit more paint and I'm keeping the light color to the outside edge. And what I've done here on number one is I wiggle a slight wave or wiggle on the outside edge. Now, I'm gonna pick up a little bit more paint so y'all can see. Now what you do is you practice on here and you have a folded paper towel that's dampened so that this, this paint's really wonderful but it will stick to the um, plastic or the sealer on here, the, not the sealer, the coating. There we go. And you're gonna practice all the way around. So if it sticks, if you don't wipe it off quickly sometimes, you will be scrubbing it off and you'd rather not. Now see the shading? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I want you to practice over and over and over till you feel comfortable with that stroke. And so if you don't put enough pressure, I, I wanna show you a couple of things that happen when people don't put the same amount of pressure. And what my guides work for you, how easy they work for you is because you can feel the pressure I use and you can feel um, when I lift and I don't use such a heavy pressure. All right, so what I'm gonna do is come right here and show you that some people when they're painting, they'll stand here and they'll just go like this and stay up. Look at the difference of the blend even when I push and I come around, all right? And so as you're, as you're doing this, you're gonna flip it and do a wiggle, not a really, just a wave. See, it's just a wave. All right, now, what I wanna share with you on this is that we're gonna do some layering, all right? I didn't put water on that yet. We're gonna layer this, okay? A little bit of water will do it and then you wipe it with a paper towel. So when we're layering the flower petals and the little uh, violets here, we're gonna do darker ones in the back. See how I'm doing this? A light little wave. I do a head, two arms, two legs. All right. Now, when I come, oh, I, oh this was I was going to show you. The other thing people do instead of doing the teardrop, like the little wave, they start here and they turn all the way around. That is not what we're doing. Okay. So make sure you don't do those and have these big loops out here because you can only get four, four petals in there. Okay. All right, now if you're doing it that way, I'm not trying to make fun of you, okay? <laughs> All right, so we're gonna pick up some more white and I'm gonna layer the next flower there. So I'm gonna take, and you can come right on top and just, oops. Oh, what I wanna share with you here, see I missed that whole one, but I'm just practicing the layering over that. So I think you'll see that. Now, you can turn your piece that's one thing people never know that they could do is they can turn their piece. And then the other thing is, is that you can layer this on here, two arms, a head, and you wanna try to get the same colors as you go around, okay? So we're layering it on top of each other and then it makes a nice little flower and you're just putting the dots, okay? Now the next thing we wanna do and, as, and when we're starting on this is we want to do some leaves, okay? I am still not going to my large uh, three-quarter inch brush, even though it looks like it is a large leaf. I'm going to use the 12. So I'm going to use my citrus green. I've already cleaned my brush out and my sap green. So I'm going to pick up. I'm going to work it in back and forth really quick. Okay, now we're ready to go stroke on the guide here. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is one side. You're gonna take and follow my stroke. That's what I want you to do. When you're following the stroke, if you're up like this, let me turn it sideways so you can see. If you're up like this 
and you're going like that, it's not fooling my stroke. If you smish it, smash it so far down, then that's not looking right. All right, so what I want you to do is just follow my exact stroke. So what happens is the first time you do this, if you go very slowly, if you go all the little waves that I do very slowly, it's going to look way better when you do it quicker. But if you do it slow, you feel the movement, which is important. All right. And then if you want to, I don't always do these stems. I'm up on the chisel and these are the little veins in the leaf and you can do it like that. I don't always do that, but I wanted to show you that if you see that I have done that, that's how I did it. Okay, so we're going to wipe this off and we're going to go and start painting our violets right on our piece. All right, so I ended with the green. All right, I ended with the sap and the citrus and the same small brush. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to lay those out for you. And I like to pull this in and look that I've got, if you spread your fingers out wide, all right, from this little finger to that thumb is where you're going to get this and that leaf. And that's going to help you lay out everything else. So I'm going to come right here and spread it out. All right. And I have one leaf here. It's not, let me get more paint on there. Okay. One leaf that's going to be over here and one that's going to be over here. All right. So that's going to help me. And there's kind of one in the middle right there. All right. So I have these. I want you to think about this when you're laying your design out. You're going to come out this way to lay your leaves. So I can even go like this and put another one that's going to come there. And another one over here. See how they spread around and out. And one over there. So laying that out helps you see that um, what happens is if you paint your leaves in tight, then there's no room for the flowers. So if you spread it out so you have all that room in the middle, you can add a few little ones if you need to. Okay, so before we start the leaf, I'm going to bring our guide back over. And what's going to happen with this guide is it's going to remind us of the strokes we did. All right, so I'm going to take one quick second and wipe off that leaf because I want you to see that leaf as we're going, okay? Now what's going to happen is that if we keep looking at this, this is going to remind us of the first stroke and the second stroke as we do this, all right? So I'm going to come right here. Remember I said we're going to go to these outer ones, but it helps me right here even to do this first one. So remember, it's a slow wave, all right? But then I'm going to come to a point, and I would turn mine so it's comfortable to do. And then I want it to stay larger. See that? It's larger as it comes back, all right? And see that ridge in the middle? When we pull our stem in there, we can just go right back over. I'd like to show you when that happens to me so you know what to do. And then you can clean that back up. See, I'm going to be up on the chisel. I'm leading with the light, with the uh, citrus green and the sap greens on the out, I mean, following. All right. So let's do this big one over here. Now, sometimes when I'm doing this, I like to pick up the white just to make it a lighter shade sometimes. And just remember, if they're all the same color and all the leaves in the whole project, um, you don't get as much realis realistic look. Now, see when I came here, see the dry? That means I needed medium. All right. So it's good for you all to see that because sometimes it helps you realize what you're not doing. Now, I've got to get more paint, work that in again, and there we go. So it should feel like butter, real smooth. You can come right around and go on this side and see I can clean up that or I can pull it out a little bit. Over here, I'm going to make these a little bit bigger. Turn it this way and just a little bit of a wave, okay? All right. Now, I, I'm going to come up here to the top, on top of this leaf, medium again, okay, a little bit of a wave, 
and come back and all the way up here so you see I, I'm going every stroke and picking up paint and every couple of strokes to come pick up the um, floating medium all right so I want you to see this I went all the way around and didn't stop I want to I want you to see that it's usually easier to stop and then come back again right there what do you think I think that'll make it feel easier for you to accomplish it and it's it makes each side more defined so I keep picking it up getting a little bit of medium all right and our last one here and it's a little bit of a wave it's not super scallopy so I want to make sure that I'm not making it really scallopy turn it around see how I'm moving it so I can get to it and sometimes you guys go oh my hand won't do that well I said then pick it up and turn it and they go oh okay so there we go so I want to pull the stem up into it and I'm leading with the citrus green okay and I might even come and put a few more in here later now there are all kinds of little buds that come up from this but if we come in and put our flowers then we know where we need extra on this sometimes I do um, sometimes I go ahead and put some of them in but look this needs to have a few more see I didn't have to redo the leaf I just came down and added a few more pieces so it's a bigger leaf okay all right there we go now I am like over here I am going to put a few of these guys out here but so then it'll be balanced I just wanted to do that run there so you can see what I'm talking about now we're going to be ready for the flowers okay so we're going to do our violets and the violets are small and sometimes I get them so big they end up being big another type of flower and definitely not a violet so I want you to think about this as we do it and what I like to do I'm going to show you this one more time what I like to do is I like to put the darker some darker ones in the background for depth and then put some of the lighter ones with white on top do you see that and same thing look at our buds they're going to be different and these little teeny sprouts that haven't opened yet are are also coming in there so that's what i want you to see as we're building this all right building our design and we have our worksheet here so we can practice that pedal and it, it's all about practicing guys so you're going to keep painting and practicing until it finally looks really good and you're happy and right now you can come right over here and pick up that dioxazine purple and the magenta all right for the darkness that we need in the back and so i'm going to put my first one here and it doesn't help me to dot them out because i'm always um, on top of each other and i it doesn't work for me so i just go ahead and i start doing the first petal so this is what i want you to think when you're doing this petal i want you to see the gingerbread head arms okay and two legs now even if see i got a little big on that one so i just can come right on top of here and do another um, two petals all right so five or more they're usually five all right so i'm going to come back here and i'm going to come way over here i just want some dark in the back and then it makes such a difference in depth if you have some darker ones underneath all righty so i want to make sure that that's covered really nice there all right so now i'm going to go back between dioxazine purple and the magenta and maybe put another one over here so now where your eyes are looking is at the magenta all right so look i'm going to come a little bit there so head, two arms, and two legs. Now, I know that might seem silly, but I have to tell you, when I've been teaching these petals, and even myself, I'd keep going and going and going and having eight. And so then when I was able to say it like that, or some people like to use the clock as a reference. Okay, so now what I'm going to show you here is I just wiped it on the paper towel, but I'm not washing it out. So now I can come right over here and pick up 
with some magenta on the purple and pick up a little bit of white. Okay, and I still, let me come here, I still would like some of the dioxazine purple with the white. Okay, now what I'm going to do is a couple of things. I'm going to come right in here and start putting that white. And, and if you don't put pressure, you're not going to see the pink. So you have to get yourself to where you don't push down too hard. But you do pick up by pressure, you're going to show some of that pink that's in there. And each one, as you're stroking, are going to get less and less white and more of the pink and purple. See that? Okay, so every once in a while, I'll just go pick up a little bit. But see all the colors? What's really fun about this is we're multi we're doing multiple loadings of three or more colors. And right here we have three. And what's happening is it gives you all these yummy looking petals. And I'm going to pick up some magenta on the tip of this one. And to go back and get that exact color, it makes it unique. So usually each one's going to be unique and pretty. See all the pretty colors? So I like that we have different values of that. We're going to come in here now with that new color. And your color might be totally different than mine. But the fun of this is you might say, oh, that's my favorite color, and just continue to paint that color. But just one of the things I do is instead of all white on the outside, sometimes I flip the brush and have dark on the outside. All of these, pretty much, I stuck to um, just a little bits of white on the outside. Okay, so one thing that you need to do, see I've got to put one over here and then I'm going to show you what I like to do before I change too many colors here. While you have the dark looking outside color and now when you have the white, you would go out on this edge out here and put a couple of those strokes with that color and it's going to be a bud. And so when we're doing the bud, everything has to come to this spot right there, right there at the tip. So the reason we want that is because it's going to be a stem grabbing that bud and into your bouquet. All right, so I keep trying to get that white. Can't see it over there. Wait a minute. So right here. So I'm going to then do chisel, chisel, and see it's going to look like a little teeny bud and I'm going to grab it and pull it back, all right? So go over your leaf sometimes. I'm getting a little big on that one, all right? Now, so I need these colors, so I should have, just to let you know here, when I did the dark, what I like to do is come here and add a few of these dark ones and maybe over here. So, so we have that color also into the buds. So you just kind of bounce around and put some of those there. All right, but these all get a second layer. And that's when I just came in and added that little bit of white. See? Little teeny stroke. And if you go back to your worksheet, you'll see that right here is when I showed you how to make the little buds and putting the layer on top. And it even tells you the number to stroke next as you're stroking it. All right. So these all have a front and a back. So I did the back already. And I'm going to come here in the front and make it pop. See how good that looks? All right, then we're going to come right here. And we'll slice one there. All right, there are a few other little buds here, but I want you to alternate your colors and make it something you like. Pick out your favorite one. I'm just picking up what looks good and going for it, okay? Uh, 
All right. Okay. So I can, I like you to look at this because when you're trying to lay out a design, five or more flowers, you don't notice if it's even or odd and you're not supposed to be even. And so when you're laying this out, so I want you to see that I have my triangle here. It doesn't have to be a triangle of color, but the triangle of design. And if you keep going in here, I automatically do it because I've done it so long. But at first, the most asked question to me is, besides loading, is how do I know how to design it and where to lay it next? So if you looked at this, I have one here, one here, I could put one here. And it might even just be a piece of one. See that? So I can uh, come right here, put that one there. And then I have one, two, three, that's got enough. One, two, three, that's got enough. So I think I need one more flower in there and then I'm gonna show you how we add the little stamens, the little stems. Okay, so one more. Okay. Now remember, it's gonna come a little bit onto the darker petal because I want it to look like it's in the back. All right, that one even looks a little pinkish. All right, now I'd like to even come down here. Let's put one more here. See, I get carried away. You don't have to follow my pattern, but it'll help you lay it out. And then if you feel like, oh, I want another little pretty one there, do it. All right, so I'm gonna wash out that brush and we have a couple more steps here and we're done. So flowers of the month are fun. It's fun because they have meaning and you can find um, the meanings out. We put it right there for you on the worksheets. Now what I think is going to be fun about this is you can take all the different flowers that you're learning and make bouquets with them with multiple flowers. Now I picked up my two script liner and I'm going to make it inky with some water. Okay, and then I like to streak it through some of the light green, the uh, citrus green. And then I'm going to come in here and grab the bottom of this by pulling little streaks from it and bring it back to my bouquet. One, two, three. Now, if that doesn't show, you might want to come in here with lighter. See that? Or sometimes you need to come here with the dark. All right. Then right here, same thing. This is closer so you can see. One, two, three. Now, see how that color doesn't show at all? Because it's already on a color that color. So there we go. Sometimes I have to try one and go, oops, that didn't work. So I get pick up the darker. Now see how they curve? They're not sticks that go straight out. They have a little curve and they come from inside the violet cluster there. All right. Right here, it's gonna be the same color, so that's not gonna work. So I gotta get the dark green, sap green, and there we go. All right. All right, so all the side views, the little buds and all, look how pretty that little one is. That's fun. All right, now I'm gonna come over here with a little bit of that dark green on the same script liner, okay? I'm gonna come here and get some of that. And we're gonna decide their little curved little stems so we're gonna start here and then we curve it and come back. All right, I'm gonna put a leaf there because I didn't get it far enough. All right, so dot, now stand up on the tip of that brush and pull it back. So anytime that it didn't fill in a little bit as much as I want, I can come back, all right? And then you can just dot it and pull. Ah. And down here. Okay. And then over here a little bit. So I'm looking for a balance. Can you see we're balancing it out? Now all I have to do to finish the bouquet besides the center is put some of these little smaller leaves. All right. So I'm going to wet my brush laid on the paper towel and we're going to pick up the green, the sap green with a little bit of white and work this in. I can put some citrus also, citrus green. All right, a little bit of white. All right, and you can get some wicker white and get some medium on there if you really need it. And I'm gonna come right in here and these are little one stroke leaves. So I can just push, push and stand up. 
All right. Now you can make these little strokes in the middle of here, just other little petals instead of a leaf like that. So it's a little slider leaf. Push and stand up. All right. So when I come back with this yellow, let me show you what's going to happen. I actually have my yellow from over here. And I'm going to take the handle of the brush. All right. You don't want to, this is what typically people do. They take this little tip and they try doing it, but then they're all over the place with that. So what I like to do in fresh paint, and that's not fresh. So if air hits at all, it won't be fresh. So you want to put some fresh paint out. Oops, not that much, but that works. Okay, and you're going to take the handle and dip and do itty bitty small different size tips. And you have the centers. Now the little side view violets, you probably would not see the center in most of those. Sometimes I've left it open where you can stick a little dot in the middle right here. I actually did a couple of them like that. All right, so, all right, we just have two flowers in here, the dark ones. Really work on being small. All right, and if I can come in here and add a couple more and I'm done. Okay, so I'm going to get a foam plate and show you some floating because that's what we're going to do around this edge. And I'm going to use some floating medium and I need still need a little bit more white we can pick up out of my um, out of my palette, but I'd probably rather put it right here so y'all can see. And then I'm going to get a little bit of sap green and I want it on a, uh, the flat foam plate so that you can see how that shading is going to be done. All right, so we're going to use this large brush three-quarter flat, one-stroke brush. And I'm going to come in here one more time and come down at the bottom, see how it's kind of disappeared a little bit? And like a feather, I'm going to touch this like a feather and stroke some this way and then some this way, okay? And later, I'm going to let it dry. You can pull a few coming down, but you don't want to do it while it's all wet. All right, so I'm going to wash that out. And this is a really fun thing that's going to give it dimension, all right, is you wet your your uh, brush, get all the paint out of it, and dry it on a paper towel, and then load it like this on the side of the puddle of floating medium, all right? And then what you're going to do is you're going to come up to the screen, and you're going to keep going right on the edge, all right? And I can get some more. Now work it in. I don't want it wimpy. I want you to really get a strong amount of that. All right. So you can also see on here how I worked with all these leaves. We're going to come in here and do the same kind of thing. We do it under the leaves. But I want to do it under the bowl of flowers. And what I want to show you on this is that we're using the color that's in the background without. This is the sap green I used here. But instead of adding white and yellow and all, to it, I am just doing floating medium and that color strong. So see how that is? Now, <clears throat> I'm gonna turn it so you can do it on this side too. Make it comfortable so you can get to it. And I wanna see you guys do all the shading because it really is gonna turn your piece into a little bit more realistic. And you'll enjoy that you get depth, all right? And when I started painting, they used water and that water would make it go the whole width of my brush and I couldn't make it stay there. So what I say, Plaid's a wonderful company, fun company to work for, creative people and they came out with a medium that makes it perfect for us to do what we want to do, so even if we're beginners, okay? So now I can go around here when this is dry, I don't want to hit that flower in case it's not dry. This is something you totally would not do now, guys. You have to let it dry. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here and float our table. All right. So if I get it on the inside and I don't want it there, I just take some medium and push it out to the outside edge. Come and get some more medium here and do the bottom. Now what I want to do is I want it really straight like a horizon line that's real straight because that's where the table would be, okay? 
So I'm going to pull it across and then I just let it fade to nothing over here. All right, then I can get heavier here. And sometimes I'll just do it heavier on one side where I feel like it's shadowed more. All right, and as that dries, I got to make sure that's straight. It's not quite straight. But look what happens here, guys. This side went a little bit higher, so I can just work that medium and make it go down a little bit more. So it's really fun when you start playing with it. And if your whole entire piece is dry before you start and you saw mine still a little wet, I can take um, a wet, wet terry towel and just wipe all the floating off and start over just because I want to try it and see. I want you to try it and see if you like it. And you won't have a problem as long as your project's all, all um, dry first, okay? Now, wasn't that fun? I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. This is so fun having a series of monthly painting classes with you. I'm thrilled to be doing the flowers of the month. It's gonna be all year long. And if you have missed some, go back and watch them if you would. Wasn't it fun learning how to get all those values, learning how to load a brush different than we did before? I was so excited to be sharing that with you today and what it will do for your painting in the future. I'm excited to have you come back next month and let me share with you, we're gonna do March and March's daffodils. So come paint with us and get your friends to come share it with us also. See you next time.